we'll take credit for causing this lack of focus today. Yeah. Because that 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 offer that I made you, which I thought was generous and uh, you know it would take. I think you you might not you understand what I say because you're a student like I am of. You know, like a lot of people I talk to, I realize they're not really a student of the mix of legalism, what I call it, yeah. well, real legalism was something to do with Judaism. Really. Sure. But what I call legalism is like coming up with rules that you really don't have biblical. Yeah. You know, you may or may not. Yeah. You may or may not. Right. I mean, it may be, you know, God didn't. The Holy Spirit didn't put out everything that would not be good. Right. Don't do this. Don't do that. You got. Yeah. There's some things you got to run through your own, you know, wisdom and. Mm -hmm. But there was a time in church life where you just music that. See, I, I was very musical when I was unsaved. Yeah. You know, I played guitar and stuff and. So when you got saved, you just couldn't, and don't get me wrong, I went through a patch of time where I didn't need to be around any of that. Sure. Because it was tied to other activities. Yeah, so I just didn't. Now, did I go around preaching against it? No. no. My own personal life, I stopped listening to certain things for a good long, long while. Yeah. Sure. And I still do. I got certain things I don't listen to. If you're going to sing about you know, about divorcing your wife or yeah. something stupid, right. then I, you've lost me. Absolutely. But there's certain music that didn't do that. It mm -hmm. was, and you had to pick and choose, but I can't lie. I, there's certain music now that I'm getting older from my, when I came up mm. that I love. I love. I just yeah. mix it in with my, I mix it in with praise and worship and, and yeah. realize that now, I wouldn't go as far as some of these guys and say it was, like, I'm getting prophecy from it. <laughs> <laughs> and some people do. And to which I say, prophesy on, because yeah, but at some I'm just point saying, you're going to find yourself the, the recipient of someone else's prophecy but, that you don't agree with. That's what we were talking about. See, legalism says don't have fun. <laughs> yeah. And I... I like to have fun. There's some room for having a little bit yeah. of fun. I'm going to have you a mix of made and it, because you know, DJ Bray from way back, and it's going to be bush hog tunes because you're going to need some bush hog tunes. Bush hog and when I'm walking. Because, see, yesterday well, I walked and I walked 50 minutes. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. increase it to an hour for too long. But anyway, <laughs> I listen to music, and if I meet somebody, and that I want to speak to, whatever, I take my earbud out. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Hey, but, so music is very important um, to me. Yes. And so I thank you for getting by. And then also, on it, instead of having the cover of every song that comes up, it's going to be a constant message, don't kick that mean looking dog. Yeah, now, a dude, I met a dude yesterday evening. Mm -hmm. He's, he's a, uh, you know, you can tell he works out every day. Yeah. You know, he had, you know, he's got all the colorful pictures painted all over his body. Too. Right, but, right. And he looks like someone you would not want to disagree with on a walking trail that's only as wide as a train track. Yes. And he had, I started to say to him, dude, you're old school, but I thought better. Yeah. Because he had, see, it's something you don't see much. He had, an old school German Shepherd. Okay. You don't see many German Shepherds nowadays. You know what I'm saying? I noticed that, yeah. This dude, which made me even more afraid of him. Right. Because he had an old school German Shepherd mm -hmm. on a leash. He's tatted up pretty good and he looks like he works out every day. Yeah. Now we spoke. And how are you doing? He was cordial. Yeah. But that, you know, for some reason, I thought if that dog decides to give him trouble, he ain't gonna have trouble. Exactly. 
But if I meet you and you got one of them, mm -hmm. and and you look kind of like me, like if that dog right. decided to get loose from you and bite that old man walking down that right. door, yeah, I don't know. I get nervous. I ain't gonna lie about it. For sure. I get nervous when people have bought more dog than they got on. You know? Hey, that's a solid point. Which you know, we got a dog. I, you know, if you taught me anything, it's strategy. Okay, strategy, mm -hmm. strategy. Mm -hmm. When my wife and children decided to mount the attacks on me that, you know, yeah, basically I yep. basically I was neglecting yep. and giving them a terrible childhood by not having a pet, right? I had pets, she had pets, the children begged for pets. So my biggest thing was I'm not going to have a dog in my house. I tend All to think right, houses are for humans. Right there I know I just opened right a can of worms, but I tend to think houses are for humans. But so I, in my nature, you know my nature is to be a little smart alecky. Well, I ain't gonna say I learned that from you, but I, I don't I, know any good preacher doesn't have one. I pick that up from somewhere. But so we go there, I find the biggest dog yeah. that they have. Yeah. Because I said that dog's way too big to be in my house. We right. have a happy dog. But we took her to the walking track one time. Yeah. My wife let her go because the dog actually weighs more than my wife. Uh -huh. Actually does. Yeah. And the dog got in the lake, was chasing some ducks. Oh my! So I finally got the dog back. Of course, you know it's funny now with hindsight. Is this off for really? Yes. I didn't <laughs> laugh at the time. You, you couldn't. You couldn't imagine. Your it being dog more was mad. chasing ducks at Oxford Lake. It was swimming in and the people lake. People was watching. There it. was a lady in the town homes yelling, "Stop the dog!" Like I'm gonna jump in the water. Well, let me ask the about dog. that lady right quick. How is it that that dog doesn't have just as many rights as that duck? Exactly. The dog was hungry, and the duck, it, they're from Canada. The duck started it. They, they come here, and they shouldn't be here. They the duck said Canada. something anti-dog. I bet it did. Like, try to catch me. Yeah. And the dog said, well, I'll try. The, the duck called the dog a quack. And now we don't take our dog anywhere like that. We yeah. may walk around the block, but we ain't going where the duck's are. You've learned a lot. Because you've shared with me some of the deal, so what you probably have farmed out, you're like, hey, if I'm gonna get in trouble about this dog, this, this, and this, y'all gonna, y'all gonna build him a shelter. Exactly. Y'all gonna whatever. Right. You have you to get you some brown back when you lose ground, man. Amen to that. I think I have. Hey, look, we have had a great last couple of weeks. Uh, it, just to kind of go through and to bring back up to speed. A vacation Bible school, the first year being back full strength, I remember because I was here plugging stuff in computers for hours trying to do a virtual vacation Bible school. We had people coming in all the time recording lessons and dances. Again, it was sweet for me, but I sad that we didn't get to share that with everybody personally. Yeah. So this is the first year that we get to do it. Back in person, I don't foresee anything but the rapture preventing us from doing it forever again in person. But we did it. It was sweet. Several decisions. Then got a young man that come early this morning who yes. post from the uh, vacation it's Bible good. school and his sister also already being a believer in her talking with him. We, we got to discuss things and he's, him and his parents are going to talk more about that. But uh, yeah. I, I like it. It was uh, one of the better ones as far as just... Uh, might have been the best one. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm you hate putting the label best on things, yeah. but you just know that this one was the best you had in a while. Yeah, yeah, because, but circumstantially, the people, the passion of our volunteers, the, right? The, you know, the kids. Uh, I I was blessed driving the van. I think every day. Mm -hmm. and, and the way that we see things, what we see as being like a success, so to speak, was the sheer amount of people that we didn't necessarily know. Yeah. The fact that yes. you have so Long many guess. new yep. prospects, guests out yep. of this equation. And you know, we all, we, we deal with reality. Mm -hmm. That's why we kind of, here, we kind of celebrate that it's it's a certain size. Yeah. And because we know the, you know, strategy. Yeah. Is we're more apt to, see I was able when you were too, to call these kids by name, yes. they got saved. And because yes. we can tell you the story mm -hmm. of how they got saved. Right. And I liked it. I've always I liked it. Too. So it seems like we gain more families, you know, 
for us, I mean, mm -hmm. we use this strategy in the follow up. We we usually try to gain three or four families. Right. The whole family. And there's a certain amount that we can manage with our with our size and our structure. And right. we we you know, we me and you have actually even kind of been I don't want to say but there's been things that we've done where it was so much so that it was very difficult to we follow stopped. up with so much of what was going on. Yeah. So we we figured out what might lead to the longest term. Oh yeah, you know the way we do uh, fall festivals and mm -hmm. back in the day we wanted park lot full and but now we want we set a certain and we know how to do it to right. where it's going to be within a pocket yes. that we can. And when you specifically focus on telling your families the yeah. church please Bring invite a, a family. family then you know they got a connection to your church That's right. and when you walk around when staff walks around we know you're connected to someone so they're standing right there with you yes exactly and again you shoot for well, let's try to get four of those families at least yeah connected mm -hmm. post Right. You know, whatever it is. And we focus all of our energies into that and get in a small group to reach out to them and us to do what we do depending well, on where they are spiritually. It's uh, And you can't do done. that if you, I mean, if you're in a place wherever you are, you know, wherever you are, wherever your church is, mm -hmm. and you can't do that if there's more people wanting to come. In our case, we're kind of, you know, we're not a one school. Right. So we're a mixture of things and so we act that way we're exactly we're a mixture of all this 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 and so we can you know we can focus on well let's try to get some of these families to tap into the church not Absolutely. just you know not just eat a hot dog and right and we have something to clean up there <laughs> so and that's what vbs was and we oh, made man. a very we don't hide the fact that when we're going to do vacation bible school it's about teaching children the bible and that's a relief. You've led that way for a long time. It's like, you come to church, you're going to hear about the Bible. One of them, that uh, young lady, got to say Friday night. You, yes. You dip her and her mm -hmm. grandmother. Cheyenne. Cheyenne. And her mom, uh, she said to me Sunday morning that she could, she was blown away. And mm -hmm. we wouldn't, I mean, I was really impressed with her mom, by the yeah. way. She was blown away at what? Cheyenne was coming home and telling her that she learned every night. Yes. She's like, and I thought about it. I'm like, you know, it's not the first time I heard this, mm -hmm. but, but, and I thought about the week and how it was set up and, and see the simplicity of things, especially nowadays, you have to have a simple church. For sure. And what I mean by that, go back to the old sto stories, happenings in the Bible. Mm hmm and find Christ in them, find what the purpose you're trying to teach. Yeah. The kids still want that. Mm -hmm, and adults, the mom was able to glean from that. Does that make sense? Yes. You, some of this, we have lost the fun of church by being too complicated. That's right. And they just need the Bible. Yep. And they need it in an exciting way. And that's, that's no fun nowadays if you I hear this word deep so much it makes me want to jump into the deep. Yeah. I mean, I'm like. I know what you mean. You talking. Not into that deep that they're yeah. referencing either. A different deep. You talking about, you know, you're saying deep and I'm saying there's a bunch of sinners can't come to your church because you have fixed it where they don't even know what you're talking about. Exactly. And because your, your quest of being deep, you have forgotten the sinners that Jesus died for. By the way. Mm -hmm. None of us knew anything. I know. So we try to. We have a lot of them sinners here Sunday, and I love every minute of it. I'm talking about. Really somebody did. sent me something yesterday about what I said about, you know, people say there's hypocrites in the church and you shouldn't, whatever. Yeah. And, and the thing said this that if you got a. that they'd rather go to a church that ministers to messed up people mm -hmm. than a bunch of people who can't minister to messed up people. Amen to that. So, I mean, yeah, you got to have your deep people that study and mm -hmm. pray up. But, but, I mean, ultimately, we're we're supposed to reach out to sinners because we're yeah. a sinner. I mean, we're saved sinners. Yeah. Our, our number one calling is to 
share the gospel with people that if if they don't hear and believe, mm -hmm. their 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 eternity is set in an awful place. However, you make that calculation, and, and me and you've lined up kind of similar on that calculation, where we haven't neglected to grow in our spiritual life, in, increasing in knowledge of God's word, prayer, but if your decision for deep means that you do not reach out to people as much or you create yeah. these artificial intellectual barriers for your your common folk mm -hmm. then something there's just a little out of balance and I, I'm not here to, to diagnose everybody I just know no. we're trying to work on ourselves here to keep that where people can come in hear the gospel like Sunday was move up Sunday right. okay so now you have effectively 11 year olds a fresh batch of 11 some 12 year olds that are in the service with you and right. they're they're just as a part of that mission field as anybody right. and so knowing that you have 11 12 year olds in there helps you to whatever that is that would be that top shelf stuff you also know I need to have some stuff on a shelf that they can reach too yeah without becoming mechanical and that's why you rely on the Bible and the Holy Spirit isn't it interesting that so many of Jesus' parables, someone said this one time, I don't remember who said it, but it's a great point. They said, I understood Jesus' parable before someone preached it. Like it was simple enough, and then sometimes it gets overcomplicated from, from what Jesus was just trying to teach. I know, and people will take you to task about it, whatever, but the, the uh, you know, what, you, what we all use Friday night with the Ethiopian unit. Mm-hmm. And of course, that was a copy of, you know, a piece of Isaiah. Isaiah's scroll. Right. Work. And then after you, I mean, Miss Cheryl had used it because the little girl, eleven, she wasn't little. Yeah. Eleven, that I dealt with Friday night, and then she she mentioned the story time with Miss Cheryl, mm -hmm. and I knew Big Jones had used it in the circle of friends, and I assumed that the yeah. preteens used it. I figured everybody. Did. Then you used it, and then used it. And then the invitation we had, I don't know, three or four saved that night. But anyway, and this little girl, let him, brings it up to me, the story. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so you got, you got, a, you got something that happened two thousand years ago, and they were repeating something that happened that was said seven hundred years before then or so. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean hundreds of years before then that that Philip had enough spiritual brains to know this guy's reading the Word of God that within itself told him he's winnable absolutely <laughs> so, absolutely I don't understand I mean just the Bible right what what two things Philip had going for number one the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that's right. I don't know any other, I don't know at my age any other thing to do. I don't really I know why you would do anything else and yeah. expect a real conversion. What a shouting experience that to, to, you, got, you got. Him listening to the Holy Spirit to go up the way he went and then to ask him, do you understand what you're oh, reading? Man, what, how, That's how? so exciting. Man. And didn't you have a sort of similar scenario someone connected to you at work over a book, you know, and, and, and that kind of conversation started more spiritual conversation. My sister-in-law. Yeah. My sister-in-law is back when the Left Behind series, which I never read. Sure. My wife reads anything comes by, but mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I mean, I'm good. I'm glad God's using it, but I, it was not my, it's not my type of stuff to read. Right. So, but my sister-in-law worked somewhere, TVA, and a very spirit-filled lady would always, on her lunch break, have her Bible. And then this Left Behind series came out, and she's reading it. It's just, she's yeah. simply reading it. But she was a godly person mm -hmm. who, who also read her Bible for lunch, which yes. is a very powerful thing to do if you're sure in an is. office setting. It was powerful anyway, just do it. I did it yeah. as a truck driver. Right. But, you know, be bold about your faith. Bring your Bible. That's part of your reading with Derek while you're eating your sandwich. Yep. You'd be shocked what God would do. Well, then she, at Christmas time, it was the year before I became pastor here. When we get together, she shares that with me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh huh. So then I asked her, 
Well, let me ask you a question. If you know, if you were to die, would you go to heaven? Do you think? No, I wouldn't. Well, you know, tell me your experience about your your church experience. You know, you say yeah. if it's somebody you know was raised right here in Alexander, Bob, you asked them, and yes. they're my age. Yeah. What's your church experience? Right. Nowadays, I ask, what's your spiritual journey? Tell yeah. me about it. People love to tell you their journey. They do. And when she shared with me what it was, and I knew she wasn't confused. Mm -hmm. She's lost. Yes. So, next thing you know, I mean, I prayed with her that day. Next thing you know, a few months later, I'm the pastor here. Mm -hmm. It's first Easter Sunday. They come to Tennessee. She gets saved. I go to Tennessee where she'll be baptized. Amen. All because some lady at work, A, had not lost her testimony. Right. By being whatever it is you can lose testimony over. And she read her Bible every day, and she was reading Left Behind series and offered it to my sister. Yep. That's how it worked. And I must, I'm going to go off on a, a little limb here and say that that wasn't the end of their conversations. Oh. And that that lady probably was there to help her answer some of her questions. Sure. And that's that's what we said that we were doing at VBS, where we have opened our church to teach you the Bible mm -hmm. and for you to ask us questions by it. And so... I, I got to commend you again. I don't, I'm being honest. I'm trying to whatever because this is the way we do things here. I got here very early this morning because I'm old and I got no kids to get off to work. So I get up. Use, nowadays it's about 4 30. I wake up. Yeah. So I might as well, without a clock, I just wake up. <laughs> so I start reading, give me a cup of go, mm -hmm. and I'm just end up down here. Okay, so. Uh you got down here early. I forgotten you had an appointment at seven o'clock. But the appointment, but you were here way earlier than that, and the appointment was a little boy and his daddy mm -hmm. to talk about Jesus. Yes. I, I I don't know what how everybody else feels about it, but that's exciting. My tank yeah. is completely filled oh, yeah. for the day. So it, that's I don't know. Every context you're in, whatever your context is, if you're if you're a soul winner, if you're saved, you ought to be a soul winner on some level. Yes. Period. Yes. Agreed. Some people are more gifted at and we're given opportunities other people don't have. We got right. an office. Right. You know yep. <laughs> so yep. we got an office in a church that believes in the gospel. So you get more yep. opportunities, I'm not gonna lie about that. That's true. That's the reason one reason I went into student ministry when I was twenty three years old. Mm -hmm. I knew I was going to get a bunch of Oh, everywhere. They hadn't stopped yeah. yet. Cool. Cool. But everybody else has opportunities too, but we have more. Let's be honest. Yep. So, I mean, they pay us to be here all, all day. So, mm -hmm. we get we take advantage of it. So, but that's the way you do it. And, you know, I've got appointments for this Sunday already. You've yep. got appointments for this Sunday already. Mm -hmm. And those don't, I don't take it lightly because I've been in droughts. How many droughts have I been in? 25 sure. years, 35 years. Sure. And so while it's going well, how about let's just have fun and do it? Amen to that. We'll, it's, we'll, uh, you know. it's coming back. Everything's coming back around. You know, I mean, with the 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 atmosphere was such that it for BBS that it just did so much to encourage you because whatever that feeling of that last year had yeah. kind of put in people, I felt that we had mostly came to the agreement that we're ready to do it again. And it was good. It was a blessing. I mean, it was good. I heard some good reports from a lot of places. And, yes. And you know, again, everybody's context is if you're where, I mean, you'd be, you know, you'd be crazy if you're where you know you can have four or five hundred. Right. But the way we're set up doing it at night, mm -hmm. then we like what we do. And it, yeah. Well, some of the families were here Sunday and brought guests, by the way. They did. So, so I'm living in Wellington, and I told them that I live in Wellington, but I live in a, you know, down the bottom of the hill. They live on top of the hill. Well, to say the funniest thing about Wellington is that people downplay it all the time, and yet, well, the people that don't live there downplay it, I should say, but they secretly want to live there. I know it's true. I ran for a mayor a time or two. Uh, yeah. My neighbor beat me out. And he's he's passed away now, and I, I'm thinking about. You think you're a shoe in now? No. Who? Yeah, you probably got you some got, new competition. You got Jeff Morris right down the road. Oh, I wouldn't want to campaign against you know, him. Landry Roberts, 
Yeah. And, you know, Landry, he he's could been be... He's been to every business in Calhoun County by job. Thank so you. he's connected at this point. And he's just the top guy, you know, he could talk it up where me and Jeff yeah. would have to... Yeah. I, I don't know. I have to wait a different year probably. I just have to wait. What would your platform be if you were running for mayor? <laughs> We will put uh, we will put battery operated uh, illumined collars on the cows when they get out. Oh, that's smart. And you won't hit one in the road. That's helpful. I was also thinking that maybe just maybe some of them ditches out there you might not make so deep because I yeah. feel like every once I don't want to think about it, but I ran into a ditch and well. Once they deepen them, yeah. it's hard to fix them. Yeah. You ever thought about it? Yeah. How would I do that? Well, since you said you're already in a low spot, they can't take the ground from your place. You have to go to one of them hilly, hilly spots and, and borrow a little something. Yeah, I'm going to style the ditch thing. The cow thing yeah. is a little flighty, I think, probably too, because you have to keep buying batteries. And would you outlaw unsweet tea? That would go over big. You would, you would get a lot of constituents. Because if you were to go to a family get-together in Wellington, Alabama, and someone had a picture of unsweet tea, yeah. Now, look, if you need diet restrictions at a feast, you bring your own diet coat. My wife even is anti-green tea. See, I'm more yuppie than my wife when I, I say, that. You know, she's like, what? Yeah. So there's not, you wouldn't say Wellington and yuppie. No. In the same. <clears throat> but you're a transplant. Yeah. <laughs> From I let it out of the bag <laughs> Why we moved. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday. Well, uh, you I didn't go that far, but now moved. you're making the connection. Well, that's so. why we moved. Yeah, hey, it's all well and good. I ain't going to move out there and run against none of y'all, but uh, you do have some stout competition. I do. And, I, hey, if they get elected, I'll help them. It don't matter as long as we agree on something, the big thing. Amen. We'll be fine. Wednesday is coming tomorrow. And because last week we had VBS, we didn't have our midweek family night. And uh, so it's back on full strength, something for all ages. And the families that come, they can attest to the value of your kids having an extra hour with other like-minded people under the teaching of God's Word and the fellowship that occurs before and after. There's not a good replacement. If you were to think, if that wasn't in existence, mm -hmm. think about it. And then you try to pull off Sunday. Ooh. I'm talking about here. Yeah. It's such a plus when people bring their families on Wednesday. Because you really? can tell it changes everything that happens on Sunday, in my opinion. It's like yeah. there's a more of a excitement, mm -hmm. uh, depth. <laughs> and, you know, when I say deep, I mean like serious about things. When you strategize, and like with the Wednesday nights that y'all had, they were going coinciding with, with the Sunday the mornings. And so that was uh, an extra level. And then if you're teaching your children on Wednesday nights one gospel, and then you're doing another one on that Sunday morning, and then you make the connection of the parallels, I mean, there's just so much that it reinforces. There is a depth that comes with our kids as mm -hmm. they... A depth of consistency. Consistency in this, the Word of God. Again, it's yes. the Word of God and Holy Spirit. You, there's just something mean you can't yep. see. Right. But yet, you know, it's kind of like the wind. Absolutely. But you can see the evidence. Correct. And Scripture. And then you see these same kids. Miss Cheryl was on the van and like, she's talking to those kids about the various things some of them had already were volunteering to do and some yep. opportunities they had here to serve. I know. Beat all I've ever seen. She, it's amazing. And that's. You don't bring kids here on a van and say, hey, we want you to be a mature your whole life. No, we don't bring them here in a car and say it. We yep. we want them to grab on to the Word of God, be mm -hmm. saved, and then serve the Lord in some capacity as they continue to study the Word of God. Absolutely. Rocket science. There was one last lesson, or it was the first week lesson. I was so impressed by it, and then we'll, we'll jump out of here, but it was... They were teaching them about the Dead Sea Scrolls. Right. And I told them on that first night that I was 16 before I had even heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls. And yet in their lessons they were using the Dead Sea Scrolls and the consistency of the variance of the ancient text to prove the veracity of the Bible. 
something that, again, they'll be challenged on come high school, college, and uh, already giving them that familiarity with that is, my mind, so important. Yeah, because people, unbelievers are, will spout off about, they'll make a statement, the Bible mm-hmm. can't be trusted or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then if you ask them, well, how much research have you done in the amount of research that's been done? There was a guy who everybody knows, uh, uh, Neil, uh, is it Degrassi Tyson, Neil Tyson Degrassi, however you say it, I always get his last two names inverted, but he's a very popular scientist of the last 30 years, astrophysicist, and he posted something two days ago saying that, you know, the more I think about it, it's possible that everything that we see and experience is just us in a snow globe on an alien's mantle. And, you know, then a Christian pastor commented to, that's what, that's the kind of thinking you get from the most, you know, intelligent people on the matter when they don't have the Word of God, that we are a snow globe on an alien's mantle. So an alien is in control of things. Well, you know, they don't even know, but they know. They know, but they don't know. You know what I mean. They're experts on everything that they don't know. Could the alien possibly put me on a beach and it be sand instead of snow? Hey, who knows? Well, maybe we can ask this guy. That's the point. That's the thinking you get from people that that their, their brains are seared by unbelief. Yep, exactly. I got imagination myself, but it won't save me. Amen. So, take faith. Faith it does in Christ. Wednesday is coming. We'd love for you to be yep. here. Sunday's coming. Yep. And did you, uh, was what we talked about yesterday your I'm move? I'm going on with it. I'm going oh. to, I've called it the consummation of the tribulation this Sunday. That's a good word. I love the word consummation. I like saying Asian. Yeah, anything with Asian makes well, you feel smarter anyway. I don't like saying aggravation. Yeah. But I do like saying Asian. Like yeah. Constant. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful biblical term used in multiple situations, yeah. obviously for marriage, but so we'll 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 and do the best we can, and I'm really fired up, and then and then I'm gonna preach a week from Sunday on hell. Yeah. And two weeks on heaven. I think it'll be great. I, I can't wait. Yeah. The I'm whole series. Good. This is a good way to. To, to finish it out. Constantly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. All right, well, Sunday we have small groups at 9 a.m. Worship at 10. Y'all did great last Sunday by inviting people. Let's yes, do it again. Yes. Brother Mike, you'll pray. We'll get out of here. Lord, you're God, and we're not. And we're mm-hmm. thankful you volunteered to be our God. Help yes. us to follow you, be obedient. Use us for your glory and what, what we do today. Help us to reach someone. Thank you for the young man that came with his dad how proud I am of his dad and I'm proud of Bray that he was available and shared the gospel we love you and praise you for all you're doing here bless all the churches around us use us all Uh, Lord before it's too late we pray to reach as many people as we can in Jesus name Amen Amen